Ritz Bits peanut butter sandwiches. The taste of Ritz Bits and meat peanut butter and patty sandwiches with no assembly required. Oh, this, this song in this hit the charts in, in England. You may not be able to read that. And five other countries. That's it. I was wondering if we could get the clarion thing in the campanile or whatever to play that tune on <laughs> appropriate occasions from time to time. If we could put the lights up, I'm very happy to answer any questions if anybody's got any, but I hope it's given a slightly different perspective on uh, some of the things that happen in other markets uh, and some of the problems and solutions to advertising on a global basis. Thank you very much. For those of you who have questions, we'd like to ask you to raise your hands and have you stand so that everyone else can hear. Does anyone have any questions? This one. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, frankly, no, we haven't. Excellent have been handling it themselves at the moment through their public relations department. Uh, I think we're reducing the amount of advertising for their products for a while. Um, luckily, in the rest of the world, it's known as ESO, and nobody's yet made the connection. <laughs> Anyone else? No, they were. Uh, it does seem quite odd, I agree. Uh, we've got a German car being, being sold in Italy, 
with an American track on it. That actually was written um, by uh, Franco Moretti. With a name like that, he works in Italy, he's actually in Australia. Uh, <laughs> by passport, but not that in Australia. Um, and Milka Bugliani, who is the other creative girl. But that, that is just straight off as it ran in Italy. All those emerged as they ran in their country. I think it's almost inevitable if you're advertising a product like Coke, um, which after all does have a country of origin. Um, yes, I think it does show that, that there is a very considerable um, uh, Americanization, if you like, of a lot of aspects of life in, in different countries. Um, you could go too far in that way, you get resentful. <laughs> um, but no, the, the the softball and baseball in Japan um, is very much the in thing, and half the players go there in the um, winter to coach and that sort of thing. And you, you obviously pick up the fact that one of the girls was one of the guys was wearing a village shirt or something up underneath his own. And that is what happens in Japan. It, it, um, it's just true to what happens there. I'm struck by two things. Uh, well, related to Coke, which is obviously one of your major mm. accounts, but the use of music is, it seems to me, you have a lot more of the image and the music. You're not actually telling anybody what they don't already know. Coke is already known. Mm. And you didn't mention, I like to teach the world to sing, which is probably my, maybe the best Coke song there was. I never heard of it before. But what Do you know, it's, inc song? It, it's incredible. That is, to some extent, um, the. Um, I've, I've forgotten what his name is now, but the co-commercial I did show was meant to be Son of Hilltop. Um, is that what you mean by Hilltop? Though? Yeah, Hill, Hilltop is that actually, it, it was when umpteen yeah, people I'm, on the, on the Hilltop in Italy. Well. Yeah. And it too made the choice. Who writes the songs? I mean, you must have someone there that, that you're thinking, we need songs like Mike Brooks <coughs> and others. That, that, that's one thing. The rumor is that the advertising agency cooked up new coke as a gimmick to have a disaster in public relations, including you sold more coke. No now. way. I just wanted to comment on new coke, too. New coke is a classic. Ah, oh, that's not meant to be a pun. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, <laughs> case of where. I think it was about $4 million worth of research can um, mislead. Um, Coco Gomez were worried that the Pepsi, the taste of Pepsi, was more appropriate to the up upcoming generation. They liked it being slightly sweeter, slightly more carbonated than Coke. And they might be losing sales. Um, in fact, were lo lo losing sales to, to, to Pepsi. Um, so they said, all right, we'll introduce a new Coke that is also a little bit more carbonated and a little bit sweeter, and went out and researched. But there was one question that in all the research they couldn't ask, or one statement they couldn't make, which was that um, if we introduce this new Coke, we're going to take the old one away. It's going to be the new Coke. And what they'd underestimated and what came back um, was the emotional tie that the old Coke um, people had to the old Coke. They would say on taste tests, oh yes, I think that's rather better and whatever, but say I'm going to take away old Coca-Cola. Um, everybody said that's taking away motherhood. You can't, you can't mess about with that. Um, it turned out oddly enough to their advantage because they were fairly quick to bring back classic coke because technically new coke is coca-cola and classic coke is the one that they bought back the old one is, has got the new name but everyone tends to forget that it's now coke because quotes new coke 
has virtually died a death. Um, but what it did do, and this is where people credit them with marketing genius, um, it doubled the shelf space. Because for a while, everybody had to carry old Coke and new Coke. Everybody was so damn confused um, <laughs> that they carried them both. Uh, and it worked hugely to their advantage. But now the sales of Coke have gone all oh, way back up again um, over Pepsi. Um, but simply because the research did not, was all factual and tasty and whatever, did not get to the emotional level because they couldn't without giving the game away that they were going to um, take Coke off the market. Um, and the one lesson it, I think it's taught everybody in advertising, um, and it's a growing groundswell, is that the emotional bonding between people and products is what one has to focus on these days because product parity and the difference between two detergents or two toothpastes is minimal. So all you've got is whether people happen to like the company, like the, the way it advertises, like the um, and the emotional attachment that people have to a product is what really matters nowadays. And that is the bit of the equation that was left out on Coke. Any more questions? Well, with that in mind, we'd like to thank Mr. Thomas for coming and joining us for Advertising Day. And before we end our program, we have a special presentation that we'd like to make to him in appreciation for his great contribution to the betterment of advertising at Iowa State University. He has never, ever been to Iowa before. And he was really excited about coming. And as I said before, when he came, um, we, we, he arrived in Des Moines. We took him to the Iowa Historical Museum. And he was really impressed with I all I took the, them. Well, <laughs> OK, we went together. And he, re, he really enjoyed all of the, the plows and the corn and things of that nature, of the Iowa nature. So, and also we thought that we would leave him with a great memory of being here at Iowa State. So with that in mind, we decided to make him an honorary cyclone. And this is like the Miss America pageant kind of. He's Mr. Advertising. So now he's an honorary cyclone. <laughs> this is your banner. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> I'm new at this. Wait a minute. I think that's it. There, there. Okay. Now he's an honorary cyclone. We also have an advertising T-shirt so that he'll remember us when he goes sailing on his friend's yacht in New York. This is advertising. It says the communication group, which is the, which is the um, student advertising chapter here at Iowa State. Thank you. And because we know that he really likes beer a lot, we got him something to remember us by when he raises his mug. It's an Iowa State mug. Oh-ho! -ho. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd just like to say thank you very much for being with us. We really enjoyed having you and having your wisdom. And we, we thank you for being here. Thank you. We'd also like to thank all of you for coming out tonight. It really meant a lot to, a lot to us to have you here. Uh, we hope that you will join us next year. Um, for those of you who would like to stay, you're more than welcome. We're having a short reception <laughs> here on the right. And feel free to come up and meet Mr. Thomas and ask him anything you would like. I'm sure he'd be happy to answer it. Thank you very much. Anyway,